Hey, greetings. This is a video on how to get into the DFIR or the DFER career field. Uh, Brett's tips, basically, because there's so many tips online that you can find on how to do this. And this is just another um, perspective to look at and consider if you're looking for some advice on getting into the field. Now, first off, there are lots of online resources. Um, if you subscribe to DFIR training newsletter, uh, you'll get a downloadable uh, list of resources and even a checklist that I've created that you can refer to and use when you're searching for the career field. So that list goes actually in more detail than what I'm going to go over in this short video. Um, first off, uh, getting any job, including a DFIR job, there's some basic rules you have to follow. You know, spell, spelling and grammar, grammar matters on your uh, resume. Um, you know, the relevance of your job history and experience, all those things apply as normal. I'm going to talk about specifically in the DFIR field uh, some things to think about. Now, first thing I like to mention is uh, DFIR is still kind of new. And I mean, it's been around for a while, obviously, but it's still new. It's not the same as it used to be in the beginning. And I kind of compare that to different career fields like a personal trainer. Uh, personal training didn't exist in before 1992 or 93, I believe it was around the time it started. But since then, it's an, an entire career field. You have college degrees and training programs and certifications and a lot of regulations. And so it's, it's developed quite a, a big field in personal training. And the DFIR field is kind of the same. Um, it was kind of a non-job in the beginning. And by a non-job, I meaning that, you know, if, if an investigator, for example, came across electronic evidence, um, there wasn't a job of digital forensics or computer forensics at the time. It was basically, um, how do I figure out to get this electronic data uh, usable in evidence? And now we have different specific fields within that DFIR uh, realm. So like I said, it's changing and in the future holds even more so. So if you're thinking that you're late to the game, you're actually not late to the game because it's actually still starting. Now, for, as far as a checklist to get into the field, pretty easy steps. Uh, find the job you want, uh, get qualified to apply, and apply. And again, when you subscribe, I'll send you the, um, the checklist of some more details on getting qualified and that sort of thing. Now, breaking that down a little bit more, um, when I say find the job that you want, um, you know, it might not be the job that you're going to get the first time or even have a chance to get. And that's a hurdle and something to think about ahead of time because... Uh, if, if you're looking at the requirements, can you meet the requirements? And if you can't meet the requirements, um, you have a choice. You can either scratch that job off the list or you can fight your way to beat the requirement. And that may or may not be possible. And as far as finding the job that you want, um, obviously I'm going to refer to the DFIR.training uh, website because there's just so many resources there. It's easy to, to find what you're looking for there, especially if you're looking for jobs. Uh, one page I have is just a bunch of links, direct links to job listings for this field. Now just picking um, one job, let's say this is a job that's your, your dream job, for example, and just for the requirements, are you even qualified to apply? And right off the bat, you can see there's a top secret or secret clearance is required for this job, and that's a huge hurdle. And if you have a secret clearance or a top secret clearance or any security clearance, you know the hurdle it is to get that. Um, if you're fortunate to have a job that automatically you have a clearance, you know, a military intelligence, for example, will just give you uh, a clearance without having to work for it, without having to apply for a job to get it, because that's basically a requirement of the job that's going to be provided for you. Um, Depending on where the job is located, do you already live there? Or are you willing to relocate or can you afford to relocate if the job is not going to pay for it? That's a major hurdle as well. Um, the requirements as far as uh, education, um, do you have the, a degree that's required or the experience that's required? Uh, and if, if you're applying out of a country uh, for a different country or living in a country that you don't have a citizenship, um, that's another hurdle to uh, to beat basically because if you don't have that already uh, the time and effort to get it may be uh, reasonable or unreasonable for you and again the catch-22 this applies to any career field is do you have the experience that they're asking for in a job that you're trying to get to get experience um, these are those you have to think about if you can't qualify to apply for the job uh, what are you going to do next well what you can do is um if you can meet them uh, meet them. Um, but do you want to meet some of these hurdles or do you have an alternative requirement? For example, the education requirement. Uh, maybe you do have the uh, an alternate experience, five years or two years experience to, uh, you know, an equivalent to an education requirement may be allowed. Um, some things you may not be able to meet. For example, if you're not a citizen of a country that requires a citizenship to get that job, 
you can't apply to that job unless you first get that citizenship. Some requirements you're not going to ever be able to make. Now, for example, if you're a convicted felon, but your dream job is the FBI Cybercrime Task Force, now, most likely that's not going to happen. Um, if it's required that you have an active security clearance, if you don't even have a security clearance and never had one, you're obviously meeting the standard of having an active security clearance isn't going to be uh, feasible or possible. And again, citizenship or work visa requirements, um, if you don't have them, you're not going to be able to apply for that particular dream job of yours. So I get a lot of emails and you know direct messages on, uh, I want to get a job, I want this particular job, but for some reason I, I can't get it for whatever reason, right? And, and I commonly hear I'm not willing to relocate. You know, I don't want to move away from family or friends or I love where I'm at. I don't want to live in a crowded area or a remote area. So for those, I kind of say, well, then you can't get that job. It's just kind of the way it works. If that job is not remote um, and you're not willing to relocate, the job is not going to come to you. Uh, you may want to think about creating that job where you're at. And that means, you know, being a business owner. So uh, that's an option where if you're not willing to relocate, then maybe you need to create the job yourself. Now applying, um, again, I'm not going to go over the basics because these are all over the internet, all over books in the library, the bookstores, um, on resume creation, interview skills, having references and networking. Those are all basic uh, requirements for applying. And this is, like I said, after you've already met the requirements for the dream job that you want. Now, as far as the path to your favorite uh, dream job, your favorite digital forensics or IR job, um, it's really a straight path. Um, there's very few instances where you know, you go to college, you get your degree, and the first job out of the gate is the job that you always wanted. And it does happen. It's just not very common that you're going to see that happen for the majority of people because there are going to be some bumps along the way and a lot of detours because of one reason or another. It could be personal, professional, could be uh, credentials, you name it. A lot of different things get in the way of getting straight to your dream job. So I do suggest uh, take the job now that can lead to the job that you want later. And because with that job you can take now, the related job that is, um, I'm not saying work, you know, a McDonald's experience is going to help you get a job with the FBI Cybercrime Task Force, but a job with, you know, a computer company of some sort can give you some related experience that can be used to apply for the FBI Cybercrime Task Force or whichever job you're looking for in the field. So you start where you can start, and then like I said, you get the experience where you're at, and then you move to where you want to go. So for example, any tech job, uh, help desk, there's nothing wrong with a help desk. I've never done it. Um, looking back on it, um, I definitely would have taken a help desk job if you know, I knew where my future was going to take me. Uh, my path was different. Mine was from law enforcement into forensics and, and so forth. Um, you know, From any tech job, you can go to an e-discovery job, and I usually give e-discovery not as a negative or a low paying or low skilled job, only because I, I give it because the requirements are a lot less to get into an e-discovery job than it is to get into a digital forensics or an IR job. And it, it doesn't make it more uh, simpler, you know, the skills itself doesn't make it any less important because you're still looking at uh, serious case litigation, right? So it, sometimes it's just easier to get into e an e-discovery job, data collection, some uh, file format, conversions and that sort of testifying, that sort of thing. And that can, can directly carry over into other fields such as digital forensics or incident response. And you can go back and forth between those uh, different jobs and you're gaining experience that you need to move into what you're looking for. And like I said, you can even go back to either any tech job or create your own job, your own business, for example, or, or combine, you know, uh, resources with someone and have, you know, a, a small, DFIR firm, for example. So just be prepared to bounce around to gain the experience you need because the jobs that require experience, you're going to have to do something to get that experience. Now, as far as getting educated or certified, um, college degrees, obviously, there's more now today than there ever were before, and certifications in another uh, avenue as well. Again, I'll refer to DFIR training because there's a list of college programs that, you know, many are online, uh, some are online or in the classroom and online combinations. So if you're looking at college degree programs, there's plenty to choose from. Uh, certifications as well, there's just a slew of certifications you can get. And my advice on the college degrees and certifications route is if you don't have experience, 
um, and it's hard to get experience because you can't get the job, college degrees and certifications are something that you can, you're practically paying for the degree and certification without having to pre-qualify for it. Uh, compared to a job, you need to qualify to apply for a job. Uh, a college degree isn't. You apply to a college de degree program, you pay, you take the test, do your homework, learn, and you can actually have the degree. So this is to help you be qualified to uh, apply, obviously, to, to jobs. So some of my advice is to meet the requirements, learn the requirements for the job that you want, and then have that checklist of what you need to do to meet those requirements. Also, you need to go beyond those requirements in some area or another because you're competing against everybody else. So although you may meet the requirements, um, do something, all right? Do something now that you're going to beat out somebody else. Uh, do something right now, by the way. Um, research and share your research. There's so many things that pop up in you know, forensics, for example. Um, somebody discovered this artifact or someone disproved what we thought to be true not to be true today or some new software comes out and finds something else. So do some research today and share your research. And there's, you know, there's the concern of, well, if I share it now, you know, there's, there's, you know, I own it. I discovered it. It's my copyright. I should, you know, be able to protect it or sell it or, you know, own it myself. I would suggest not to think that much <laughs> deeply as far as what you're uh, finding out and sharing. Because what you find and share, just share openly because it is, it's your, your name is on it. If you discovered it, uh, practically your name is on it and everyone is going to know who discovered this. Um, get involved with the community today as well. This is forums, groups, conferences, and organizations. Um, get your name out there. You need to be online and be involved with the community. Now there are many people who don't do that um, for any number of reasons. One, you know, being shy, for example, uh, being afraid of being wrong, uh, being afraid of being attacked. You know, there's I mean, there are haters on the internet and you can be attacked. So there's that fear of that as well. But it's one of those things you have to do. You, if you want to be known as a known quantity, you're going to have to be involved in the community. Um, some other advice is be careful with how much money you spend or how much money you're willing to go into debt for. Because this, as with any field, you know, that's uh, high tech, whether it be, um, you know, legal field, medical field, or technical field, it's expensive. Training courses are expensive, college is expensive, software is expensive. So before you start spending a lot of money that you do or don't have, just be aware of what you may need or may not need. And again, the paper that I wrote that you can download, um, it's going to go over some of this more in depth on my advice on what to spend money on and what not to spend money on and what you don't have to spend money on. I mean, as far as advice goes, and this is what the words you're hearing right now, everyone has different to offer, right? Something different to offer with advice, inclu including me, because everyone has a different starting point. Uh, my starting point was, I mean, I grew up in the age of the Commodore 64, right? So it's, it's different than someone who grew up in the age of Windows 8, you know, and now Windows, you know, 10 and that sort of thing. So the starting point is different, so the advice is going to be different. Everyone has also different resources to draw upon. So Potentially in a job that you have right now, you might be able to work your way into this field without spending a dime or spending any of your own time. It could be all job related. And that can happen in, in law enforcement or government particularly works out well. So if you're in law enforcement, for example, and you want to move into this field, you can practically move into this field without spending a dime of your own money in a minute of your own time because you can have the job pay for all of it. Now, obviously, if you do that, in law enforcement, you're going to be spending a lot of your own time, right? And you will be spending a lot of your own money too, if you want to get into this hard and heavy. So, but I'm just saying that different resources, different paths for different people. Also, everyone has different goals. So when you're asking somebody, hey, what do you think about me doing this? Uh, the person you're asking may have a different goal and may think that your goal is kind of, well, that's not what I would do. Um, I would actually would want to do something differently. So keep that in mind as well. And again, experiences are going to vary. Uh, my experiences are going to vary from someone else, with, uh, say, without law enforcement experience or without military experience. So different experiences are going to, you know, mold different perspectives. So take everything you hear with a grain of salt, including what I'm saying, because um, you, you, you take the advice from many people and you try to pick and choose what applies to you. Now, I do believe in luck, and I believe you make your own luck. Um, some things are obviously lucky. And I just call that timing and coincidence. If you just happen to be at a conference and you just happen to bump into somebody and you happen to say hello and meet and greet 
and swap business cards and perhaps you get a, your favorite job offering right there. Now some would call that luck, but I would call that making that your own luck because you made your way to a conference, you made sure to talk to people, you made sure to bring up certain things in a conversation and you made sure that people knew you're looking for a job and therefore you made that own luck. Now part of that involves being nice and polite um, because there are rude people in the world. They're, either by nature or by circumstance or environment, they became rude. Um, don't be rude. Uh, be nice and polite. Say hello to everyone you meet. Um, don't be the, the wallflower. Um, you need to come out up front and say hello. Offer to help those who need help. If you're an expertise in something, you're going to college and you just studied and mastered something, um, whatever, whatever it may be, Python, <laughs> for example, and you meet someone who doesn't know anything about Python but wanted to learn, give some advice and offer to help. And also ask for help and advice because when you're nice and you ask nice people, nice things happen. So just keep that in mind that you make your own luck. Now, as far as the deeper world, um, and, and I say this for a lot of different things. Um, we live on a small planet and only for a short time together, right? So the deeper world is much, much smaller than that. And so remember that everyone is connected to everyone in some manner. Um, the degrees of separations are so slight and small in this community that you have to keep in mind that this can work for you in a great way or it can completely obliviate you. Uh, it, this can, can just destroy you if you're doing something that's uh, negative for the community. So my advice on haters, complainers, and those destroyers is keep your distance. Um, you don't need to attack back. You don't need to attack anyone uh, or complain about anyone. Uh, just keep your distance because the the haters and the destroyers, and these are the people who have did strong negativity, um, they're not going to be a good positive influence on you, and they're not going to help you in any way whatsoever. So stay away from those and try to be known as a problem solver, a positive problem solver and not a problem creator because employers want to hire problem solvers. They, they don't want a problem creator because naturally in any business there are problem creators, you know, as as employees. Your, your, some of your peers are going to be problem creators. Some of your supervisors are going to be problem creators. And some of your subordinates are going to be problem creators. People want to avoid those when they're hiring. So be a problem solver. Now, as far as summary, um, this field is the best in the world. And I say that because it for me, it is. Uh, for you, it might be too, but your goals might change and really that is okay. Uh, even if you get the job that you love or the job that you thought you would love and when you get it, you might not like it, that is okay too. Uh, I think you're going to love it and I think you're going to be great at it. If you're listening to this this video, right, and you're reading my paper and you're, you're going through the DFR training website and you're, and you're seeing these things and you're researching, how do I get a job in this field? If you're doing that today, I really think you're going to love this field. And I really think because of that, you're going to be great at it. And with that, you have all the best luck that I can wish upon you. And like I said, ask. When you meet somebody, be nice. Ask nice people. Nice people are going to help you. And with that, good luck.